Right. <coughs> this is a plastic test tube containing sodium hydroxide. This is your sodium hydroxide, which is 4 molar solution, NaOH, okay? Now this contains sodium carbonate solid, which is soluble in water. This is sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate is also known as natrium carbonate. Huh? Natrium is sodium. Can you see the word? Natrium. Okay. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to put this in water. And uh, you will find that uh, you will find that if I put in UI, which is a green indicator, then this will turn purple. This will also turn purple. Huh? So both of them turns purple. Both of them turns purple. Can you see? This one turns purple. And this one turns purple as well. Right? Turns purple. Is it purple? Yeah. It is purple, right? Oh. How come sodium hydroxide turns green, not enough sodium hydroxide. Uh, maybe I put some sodium hydroxide. Mm. Uh, never mind. I'll put some more. Mm. It's still green. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Why is it green? Let me check and see. Let me put in some uh, sodium hydroxide solid. Ah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to put in some sodium hydroxide solid. And uh, it should then then purple. Sodium hydroxide solid is also known as caustic soda, okay? So I put some caustic soda inside here and I shake. something to stir. I give you the chopstick to stir. Stir. Does it turn purple? No. Hey. How come it doesn't even turn purple? Okay, okay. okay. This one turns purple. Huh? It turns purple, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Turns purple. Hey, Max. Keep quiet. Okay, now we say that uh, sodium hydroxide or caustic soda is a strong alkaline, okay, while this one is only slightly alkaline. We will explain to you why sodium carbonate 
is slightly alkaline. So what we are going to do is we are going to put some weak acid inside. This weak acid is uh, what we call uh, acetic acid. So this is acetic acid. The acetic acid will react with, can you see, it will react with the carbonate to give carbon dioxide. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, now you will find that there is a little bit of uh, yellow. Can you see a little bit of yellow? Yeah. Can you feel the plastic test tube? Yeah. What do you feel? A little bit warm. A little bit warm. Therefore, you can see that uh, there's a neutralization going on between the weak acid and the weak alkaline with the evolution of carbon dioxide. Okay? So, we're going to put more UI and let's see what happens. We put more UI. And of course, the top portion will turn red. Can you see? The top portion will turn red. And there you are. We are creating now green begins to appear already. On the green portion, the sodium carbonate is exactly neutralized by the ethanoic or acetic acid. Can you see? Now we are creating what we used to say rainbow in the test tube. Test tube huh? Rainbow in the test tube. And the color begins to become more distinct. Oh, okay, okay, okay. More distinct, can you see? Alright, by right we should be able to see about six color let's put it here for a while okay now we put in the uh, acetic acid or ethanoic acid in a strong alkaline can you see that you need a lot of acetic acid to put in uh, before it can neutralize that yeah. Huh? Right. And this one can only give you probably about three colors. Purple, green, and purple, green, and red. Huh? It doesn't give you... Oh, no, no, no more. Let's put in some more. Uh, this one can give you three colors. But this one... Is able to give you more than three colors. Let's shake this a little bit. And then now you will see a little bit of what? Orange. Can you see orange now? Not very much. Uh, oh, then the top turns orangey. Yeah. Huh? The top turns orangey, and then if we put more acid onto the top, it will turn red again. Okay, uh, let's see what actually happened. Yeah, you yeah, actually you see more than three colors. Huh? Uh, what do you see? Uh, red. Yellow, green, blue. Ah, green. you can see red, yellow, yellow, orange. Huh? And then there is blue between the purple and the purple and the green, right? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Purple and purple and the green. So there you are. You see almost three colors. Huh? You see almost three colors. Okay. 
now you see more than three colors but over here you only see three colors purple green and red you don't see anything that is yellow or orange so this one only three colors and this one the uh, orange and yellow will begin to appear slightly okay let's leave it for a while huh? let's leave it for a while now <clears throat> so you have a weak alkaline neutralized by a weak acid you get this kind of almost well, this one is still not as good as as what we did before, right? Huh? Yeah. What we did before, they were quite distinct color. Never mind, we'll put this a little bit longer and see. Okay? Now, acid will neutralize alkali. That is sodium carbonate. And now, before you came, you know what I did? I put this egg inside an acid and now this egg can bounce on the table. <laughs> can you see the egg bouncing on the table? Yeah. yeah? Uh, let's put the egg bouncing on this box. Uh, bouncing on this box. Why is this egg now having no shell? Why do you think the egg doesn't have any shell anymore? Why? Uh, Why is this egg having no shell? The shell has alkaline. Huh? The shell, the shell has been dissolved by the acetic acid and the reason why the shell dissolved in the acetic acid is because the shell is actually made up of calcium carbonate. Huh? Now you wonder how chickens are able to or even ducks eh, are able to make a hard shell which is actually composed mainly of calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is insoluble in water but it will react with acid. Eh? It will react with acid. And uh, I can show this reacting with acid have to be careful with them huh? by taking an egg and put inside this okay let's take an egg and put it inside this. And now you put this egg inside and what do you see first the egg sinks right huh? can you see the egg sinking yeah. all right then what begins to appear around the eggshell? Bubble. Bubbles, tiny bubbles. And this tiny bubble is able to do what? Lift up the egg, right? Yeah. He lift, lift up the egg. He lift up the egg to form to form a layer uplifting the egg. You should be able to uplift the egg. Let's see. Is it lifted up? Not yet. Is it lifted up? It's beginning to go up. Yeah. Okay? And that is how the bubbles stick to the egg and it effectively make the egg less dense than the acid. So can you see there? Uh, so it's beginning to come up right now. Huh? You can see the tiny, tiny bubbles. 
Okay. Now you use your phone to take a video and I explain all that is here in front of you. <coughs> here I have got strong alkali with a weak acid and there are only three colors purple, green and red. Here I've got a weak acid with alkali and a weak acid and it's able to give you more colors, more color layer. It has got green, it has got yellow, it has got orange. Huh? Now, of course, if I put more acid at the top, then the top will become red. Ah, the top will become red. Can you see? So now there are orange and yellow layer. And actually, there is a blue layer between the green and the purple. Huh? Between the green and the purple. Maybe you can see. Uh, yeah, I can see. Yeah, green and purple. So this is about six color in a test tube. Okay? And then over here, we have an egg where the shell is completely dissolved. And this egg can bounce on top here. Huh? Yeah. And this is obtained for about soaking this egg with the hard shell in vinegar for about three hours. But if you use quail egg, quail eggs are much smaller, right? Huh? Yeah. Then you might be able to get in in one hour, okay? And the reason why the hard egg shell dissolve in vinegar which is acetic acid or ethanoic acid is because the hard shell of calcium carbonate is reacted upon by the acid and then the shell completely disappears. So my question is how are chicken and duck so clever to produce hard shell? I can only have one explanation and that explanation is as the egg is formed, it comes down the track and then somehow the chicken and the duck were able to produce some alkali calcium hydroxide, so to speak. And then it is able to extract the carbon dioxide from the blood that goes into the, the, the track and calcium hydroxide and the uh, carbon dioxide becomes calcium carbonate, hard, not soluble in water. And that's how the chicken and the duck were able to incorporate the carbon dioxide into the calcium hydroxide of their alkaline blood. And that is deposited on the egg. You know, you see stalactite and stalagmite, right? Yeah. Uh, those are also due to the fact that calcium hydroxide, which can be a liquid, is reacted upon slowly by the carbon dioxide in the air. You know? <clears throat> As a Christian teacher, I can tell you, or I can make a guess, how Jesus turned water into wine. You see, wine is actually it, uh, ethanol. Ethanol contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But how water has no carbon, right? How, how can, where did the carbon come from in ethanol when Jesus turned water H2O into CH2, no, into C2, H5OH. That means he has incorporated the carbon dioxide, right? So as the creator of the universe, he's able to pull the water to pull the carbon dioxide and mix it around and turn it voila, into 
ethanol molecule, which is one. And ethanol molecule are the only ethanol that you can drink. Huh? All the other alcohol you cannot drink. It's poisonous to the bloodstream. But if it is C2H2OH, it's called ethanol or ether alcohol, you can drink. Yay! No, somebody said, uh, I don't believe in God. You know why? Because I cannot see him, I cannot touch him. And then the Christian turned around to the atheist and said, Can you touch your brain? You can't. Can you see your brain? You can't. When you can't see anything, you can't touch anything, you don't believe that it exists. Say, because I cannot touch God, I cannot see God, I don't believe that there is a God. Then you can't touch your brain, you can't see your brain, so you are brainless. <laughs> you got no brain, right? So the ATS has got no brain. Yeah. Any question? No.